that God is here. I believe where his people are, his spirit will always be with us. Amen. Can you can you do me a favor? We still have a few more minutes before we go online. But can you please stand with, with us? And um, I know you've had your own devotion this morning, wherever you were in, in your in your home. But um have a devotion together, is that okay? Is it possible for us to have um, a devotion together? Um, if at all possible, can you just hold the person's hand next to you? As I said to um, the, uh, the team this morning, I will never know what you're going through unless you disclose it to me. Good to see you, Sister Barbara. I will never ever know lady and that wonderful to see you man. But you know what? You know it's wonderful when someone holds your hand just to claw that and says I'm praying for you. I don't know how you feel but when someone holds my hand and they don't know what I'm going through and they say my sister I'm praying for you. So before we allow the world you know into this, this building I would like you to hold that person's hand. Lord, hold their hand and squeeze their hand and just tell them I'm going to pray for you from the front to the back just squeeze their hand come on don't be shy young people join in join in person's hand and I want you to pray for them pray for them like it's the last time you're gonna see them because I don't know if I'm gonna see you again you don't know if you're gonna see me again but I tell you something we're gonna glorify God this morning almost like the rapture is about to come come on brethren let's pray let's pray Maybe your first time in a while. If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired Word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes. But we'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community, and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So, no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out His plan for us. So, welcome to church. Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's lift up the name of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Yeah, clap your hands. All ye people. Hallelujah. And let's lift up our King. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name. Jehovah, my King and my God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Father. Hands up. Heart. 
hearts open wide as the sky. We lift you high. We lift you hands up, hands up. Hearts open wide as we cry. God, we lift. God, we lift your name high. Hands up, hands up. Hearts open.
I believe that something happens when we lift up the name of Jesus. I don't always understand it, but I believe something happens. Sister Marie, I believe that when we say hallelujah, thank you Jesus, glory be to your name, Sister Paulette, something happens. I also believe that when we lift up our hands, glory God, when we lift up our hands, something happens as well. As we lift up our hands and give God praise, I believe it's an act of surrender. Surrendering to him. I thank God for the day he rescued my life. I don't know about you, because I don't want to assume that everyone in here is a Christian. I don't want to assume. But I thank God for the day he rescued my life. Are, are you glad that God rescued your life? Oh, Lord. Are, are you glad that God rescued your life? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. I shared with the worship team that I can be quite animated, you know. And I said that sometimes I feel that God just literally grabs us. You know, sometimes when your mother had to grab you and tell you to come here. And I believe sometimes the Spirit of God says, grabs you by your neck sometimes and says, come on. Not left. Come, we need to go to the right and come now. Now, now, now. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name. There's a song that says, You have rescued my life. You have rescued my life. And I'm never going back. You have rescued my life. You have rescued my life. And I'm never going. Come on, people of God. Declare it. Come on. You have rescued my life. You have rescued my life. You have rescued my life. And I'm never. And I'm never. rescued my life you have rescued you have rescued my life and I'm never and I'm never going back my response is my response is hallelujah hallelujah you're my redeemer
rescued my life. You have rescued my life. You have rescued my life. And I'm never. And I'm never. I'm never going back. Going never ever. Back. Ever going back. You have rescued my life. You have rescued my life. Father, you've rescued my life. You have rescued my life. And I'm never going back. My response is, my response is, hallelujah, you're my redeemer, hallelujah, hallelujah, my response is, my response is, hallelujah, hallelujah, you're my redeemer. Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Okay, we're not going to sing another song right now. We're going to send up praises to our Father. Hallelujah. Let it sound like thunder in here. Let it sound like a thunder of praise in here. As we thank God for rescuing our lives for taking us out of a pit of sin and shame and disgrace. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you for your blood. Thank you, God, for rescuing me. Come on, people of God. Hallelujah. Whether you clap your hands, whether you shout hallelujah, it doesn't matter, but together as a family, we're going to thank God for rescuing our lives. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise, God. Hallelujah. Oh, God.
said that before we sing another song we were going to let up a praise unto God like an army let the enemy know hallelujah 
that there are angels around us. Hallelujah. Let the enemy know that we're not standing by ourselves. Let the enemy know that there's a host of angels around us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Children of God, let us shout to your God. Jesus, hallelujah, Sister Johnson, hallelujah, 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 we bless the name of the Lord, keep the praise going, he is worthy of it all, he is worthy of it all, hallelujah, praise God, praise God, this morning Lord God we thank you and we praise you. Father, this morning we are not alone. Lord Jesus, in the midst of everything that is going on, Lord, we are not alone. Jesus, we have you, Lord, to fight our battle. So this morning we lift up our praise to you this morning, God. And we tell you thanks for everything, Lord God, that you have done for us. And all what you're about to do, Father, we just want to thank you. Lord, we thank you for this day that you have made. Let us rejoice, God, and be glad in it. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, for the women's ministry. Lord, God, we thank you, Father, to bless Sister Sarah and her team, oh God. Lord, we ask you to bless her family, oh God. Lord, we ask to bless Bishop as he's not here with us today. But we ask the Lord to reach out to him wherever he is this morning. Bless his wife, Sister Liz, this morning, Lord God. Bless his children, Father God. Lord, this morning we thank you, Lord God, for all the ministers of God in the house today. Lord, this morning we ask you, Lord Jesus, to bless our speaker today. Lord, when she speaks today, Lord, let she speak with fire, oh God. Lord, lead and direct and order her footstep today. Lord Jesus, help us to be list, to listen, Lord God. But not just to listen, but to do the work of God. To do the work that as she speak today, Lord God. Help us to be doers of the work in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, we thank you for all the worship leaders. Oh God, we thank you, Lord God, for the moderator. Lord Father, we thank you for the musician, oh God. We ask you, Lord God, we thank you for the congregation, Father God. Our dear visitors, Lord, the listeners online, Father God. Lord, with media, our beautiful secretary, Lord Jesus. We thank you for her, Heavenly Father. And this morning, we invite the Holy Spirit of God in our presence this morning. Lord, do not forget all the ushers at the door. Lord Jesus, they are the first line of contact as we walk through the door, Father God. The beautiful smile that they give us, the way they work with passion, the way they lead us to our seats, my God. Every week we come for more and more. Lord, sometimes they do not have a smile of their own. But Lord God, they give us a smile. And we thank them for that, Jesus. And this morning, Lord God, let your spirit flow in this place like never before. Because Lord, we want to prove to the world that we are not on our own. We are the people of the living God. And this morning, we ask you to lead and direct the service in the way that it should go. 
Father God, that when we leave this place today, Lord, we will say it was a good thing to be here. Lord, let us go out and share it with others, the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Lord, I pray this prayer in no other name, but in the name of Jesus, our soon coming King, in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. 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 You may be seated, brethren. I just want to extend warm greetings to everyone in the sanctuary this morning. I greet you all in the precious name of Jesus. And we've got some wonderful people, not saying that the rest of us isn't wonderful, but we've got some extra special people in our midst today. Praise the name of the Lord. I'd like to welcome um, Sister Marie. Amen. You'll hear more about her a bit later on. And Sister Marie's um, sister, Sister Pat, welcome in the name of Jesus. And we've also got with us um, our dear lady, Annette Jackson, from the Wilsden District. Amen. Not only is she from the Wilsden District, ah, she is the district woman's ministry yes leader sister annette please stand up for us greetings in the name of jesus amen and we've also got some wonderful brethren from wilsden that have come along um today they were with us yesterday can our wilsden brethren please stand let's give them a hearty welcome amen amen and I don't know if there's anyone else from the district. Oh, sorry, Josh. He's one of us. I'm sorry. <laughs> Welcome, Josh. <laughs> amen, amen. And we greet Pastor and Sister Liz in their absence. And to all our online brethren and friends that are watching. And also special greetings to Sister Sarah, our local women's um, ministry leader. And um, the board. And I'm sure Sister Sarah will um, introduce the board again later on. Amen? Amen. 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 We're going to have a wonderful time in the Lord today. There's a song that, um, and I'm not going to sing, there's a song that I remember from way back in my old church when it says, fire to the enemy, fire in your hands, fire in your feet, fire, fire, fire to the enemy. So this morning, hmm, has anyone got fire inside? Hallelujah, hallelujah. So this morning, we're going to tell the enemy, yes, we got the fire. And it's not the one you turn up and down, but it's the Holy Ghost fire that's in us. So we're going to have a wonderful time in the Lord this morning. If you feel like dancing, please dance. God has given us legs that we can move. If you feel like running up and down, we've got a little space in the middle there, but yes. Feel free in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. So we're going to have our morning scripture, and it will be taken from Romans 8, and it's only two verses, from verse 12 to verse 14. And I just ask if we could all stand, please, while we read um, the word of God. That's Romans chapter 8, from verse 12 to verse 14. And I'll read. Therefore, brethren... We are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if we live after the flesh, flesh, ye shall die. But if we through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Verse 14 and last. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Let's say amen to the word of God. Amen, amen. And you may be seated. And I'm going to ask right now if our children can come forward. This is something that we do every Sunday. And that's to cover our young ones. That's from toddlers, everyone under the age of 25. Please come forward. I'm going to ask Sister Coral 
If you could do a prayer for our children, please. They look so lovely. Come forward, come forward, come forward. The blessings that God has given to us in the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give God thanks and praise for our beautiful children. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. What a wonderful, beautiful set of children and young adults we have here this morning. God bless you. God bless you. Father God, we come before you this morning in no other name but in the name of your son, Jesus. Lord, we thank you this morning for life. We thank you that you woke us up in our right minds this morning, brought us into your sanctuary so we can give you the glory, the praise, and the honor. And Father, as your young ones have come before you, they have come to worship you. They have come to say thank you. They have come to adore you. They have come to know you more and more as Lord and Savior. Father, Lord, I pray that you attend to their needs. Father God, sometimes we don't know what their needs are. Sometimes we don't understand, but God, you understand. And as long as they know that they can go in their quiet space and speak to you, Lord, and they know that you will also speak to them, you will guide them, you will protect them, you will provide for them, you will bring them through their day, through their school, through their college, through their first job, through university, Lord. You will take them through the exams, you will take them through all of their anxieties, and you will bring them forth stronger. Father, we thank you because you have blessed us with these beautiful young men and young women. They are our future. And so, God, we lift them up before you this morning and we pray a special blessing on each and every one of them. Lord, I ask that you bless their homes, bless their siblings, bless their parents, Lord, bless their grandparents. And I pray, oh God, even for the very schools they attend, the colleges, the universities, the jobs that they are attending, Lord, I pray a blessing in every single area of their life as we lift them up before you this morning have your divine way Jesus and I thank you Lord for the joy you give the peace that you give the comfort you give the strength that you give Lord we thank you this morning your name is to be lifted up your name is to be glorified your name is to be honored your name is to be praised and so we lift them up before you this morning and we say thank you in no other name but in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth amen 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 be blessed. Be blessed, children. Be blessed. Amen. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. As our young ones go back to their seat, young adults and, and children, we give God thanks and praise. And I forgot to ask if we had any visitors in the house this morning. If this is the first time that you have come into the sanctuary, we just want to give you a, a, a welcome. Any visitors today? Oh, what's your name, darling? Nefitari. Say that again. Nefitari. Nefitari. Welcome in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much. Is that another hand I'm seeing over there? And what's his name? Davina. Davina. Davino. We bless God. I think pastor is going to be pleased. Amen. We've got two new people in the house this morning. Amen. We give God thanks and praise for them. Amen. We are blessed as we've just prayed for our children. We are blessed that God has given them gifts. And we are going to hear from a young lady. Amen who's taken up her position. She's gifted in many, many areas. She's gifted in, in music, gifted in singing, gifted in praying. And dare I say it, I call it into being gifted in bringing the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the name of God. We're going to hear a violin resettle by um, our dear Alicia McLean. Amen. Give her a hand.
Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to share something with you about this young lady. Some of you may have heard it before um, from her father. But we're coming from um, a church before we came to New Tea. And when Alicia was a baby, you remember, well, you don't remember, but you've been told, we were doing a play. And um, the play was about um, Sarah and giving birth to Samuel. And then when the baby was held up, the pastor there at the time took Alicia as a young baby, held her, and started to pray. But then he, he moved away from the script. It was no longer a play. But this pastor prayed over this young lady when she was a baby, a baby in hand. And he couldn't stop praying. And I don't know if somebody dragged his, his um, jacket, but he couldn't stop praying. He covered her. And so this morning, Alicia, hallelujah. you played the violin and you said here is my worship all of my worship I pray that as you play that God receives all your worship I pray as you sing that God receives all your worship I pray that as you open your mouth and send up a prayer and a praise all of your worship. Hallelujah. May God cover you from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. May you walk in the blessing of God. May everything that you do, hallelujah, be blessed. May God's favor be upon you. May you walk in the spirit of God. And may the Holy Spirit continue to be your guide in Jesus name in Jesus name hallelujah 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 oh glory to the name of God hallelujah it's offering time. It's blessing time. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to the name of Jesus. Ma. Thank you, Jesus. As the ushers get ready to collect this morning's offering, if you need an envelope, please raise your hand. Please put your tithes and your offering in the envelope. Sign and date it, please, so that the church can receive 20% back. Amen? Amen. Hand over to the worship team.
the joy. God is the joy and the strength of my life. He removes all pain, misery, and strife. He promised to keep me, never to leave me. He'll never ever fall short of his word. I've got to back and praise stay in a narrow way. And keep my life clean in every way. I want to go in. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. We bless you this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. I greet you all, brethren, in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we've been having a wonderful time over this weekend. And God is moving in our midst. Amen. Hallelujah. We had a wonderful time in his presence yesterday. And the theme that the Lord has given us for this weekend is led by the Spirit. Amen. Amen. We don't want to be led by our flesh. We don't want to be led by the fashions and the things that the world promotes, but we want to be led by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. And that is something that the Lord has been speaking to me very strongly for some time. Are you willing to be led 
by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So this weekend is all about a complete surrender to the Lord. Saying, Lord, we want to walk according to the Holy Spirit. We want to be in step with the Holy Spirit. We want to be able to be listening and be tuned to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So I encourage you, brothers and sisters, that... You know, retune yourself, your spiritual frequency to listen to the Holy Spirit, no matter where your walk has been. But it's a time to come back and to say that, Lord, I want to be led by your Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And uh, I just want to thank every one of you for coming this morning. And uh, I just want to uh, introduce our board to you. And I request all the board members to just come and uh, appreciate all your, you know, hard work that you've been doing for this weekend and even behind the scenes always. So can you just quickly come? We don't have much time. So we have Sister Lindell. We have Sister Coral. I want uh, Sister Powell to come. Sister Paulette, can you please help Sister Powell to just come to the front? We have the lovely Chanel. We have Sister Herman, who is not here. She's in Jamaica. So our board is made up of the young women, and we have um, the representative of the elderly women. So we have all the ages being represented on our board. And I believe that it's our young women who are very important. They are the next generation. So we have Chanel, who is, uh, you know, uh, going to lead the young women in our church. So she does Bible studies with them. She takes them out and uh, she engages with our young women. And we have uh, our sister Pavel, who is, she's like the Titus II woman, leading the younger women in the ways of the Lord. So we give God thanks for these women. We have sister Coral, sister Lindell, and uh, sister Paulette. Sister Paulette is our prayer coordinator. She's up every Monday morning and every Wednesday morning, 6 o'clock, she's on Zoom. And uh, we all join together. We intercede for the church. We pray for our children. We pray for the government. So 6 to 7 in the morning, there's prayers going out every week without fail. Amen. And during COVID, we prayed seven days of the week, 6 to 7 in the morning. And God kept us. Amen. Hallelujah. So thank you, ladies. Thank you, each of every one of you. And I pray that we will all continue to work together for the Lord. Amen. God bless you all, Sister Corbin. God bless you. Bless you, Sister Linda. All right. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. I want to welcome all my dear sisters who are visiting from Wilston and other district churches. And today, we are very, very blessed to have with us Sister Anna Jackson, who is our district president. She's a wonderful woman of God, very passionate in working for women, and she's always encouraging us and, uh, you know, to uh, just go forward in how the Lord leads us. And uh, thank you so much, Sister Johnson, for being here, Jackson, for being here this morning. So... I welcome you to come and greet our women this morning. Thank you. Amen. Good morning, church. Such a beautiful set of people. It isn't my first or second time. Um, it's probably my sixth, possibly, uh, way back when Bishop Stewart was the pastor. Um, and just to see, I'm encouraged to see how many new faces the Lord has planted in his church. And so we know the Holy Spirit is everywhere. Amen. Amen. The word of God says, be led by the Spirit. And I just want to commend uh, my sister Sarah for doing an absolute great job. Can we give her another, a stand innovation actually I think would be good. Because she works tirelessly around the year, uh, making sure that the women's ministry is effective. You may be seated. Thank you so much. So I greet um, our Bishop Chambers and Liz in their absence. Um, Sister Sharon, who drove me just across from Wilsdon. Um, 
I was on the motorway at 8 o'clock this morning from Birmingham, so we do the trip every week, and we thank God for his staining power. I want to ask our sister, my assistant, Barbara, to stand, uh, Sister Tanya, who leads the Shine Ministry, to stand, and her beautiful children, and Sister Christine, thank you. Um, so I just asked a few representatives, thank you so much, to come and accompany me. But um, I just wanted to quickly read a scripture. And Josh, God bless you. <laughs> Bear with me one moment. It's nine. Right, okay, and it says verse 27, chapter, Matthew chapter 9, verse 27, and it says, And when Jesus departed, then two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him. And Jesus says unto him, unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this. They said unto him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes and saying, according to their faith, be it unto you. And I was just looking at that scripture. One, they were blind. So we know if you're a blind person, you have to either have active ears to listen to the voice of God. And this is what the Lord is calling us to do. Have Make sure that our ears are active to listen. Because in order to navigate through life, we need the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so I know our sister Marie is ready with the word. And I just wanted to leave you with that. Make sure your ears are pricked to lead, by, to be led by the Holy Spirit as he continues to encourage us to greatness. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lady Annette. Amen. Um, I understand that there's a sister Charmaine also from Wilsdon. Ah. Welcome. I think I welcomed you this morning at the door. Amen. Amen. Good to have you with us. We're now going to have um, a treat. I wonder what that is. Choir? Not yet. Choir, are you ready? Sister Rhoda, are you ready? If the choir can come forward, please. Let's give them a hand. And you know, we have to give God thanks and praise because for a very, 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 very long time in the choir, we only had one man. But bless the name of the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. One has now become four and he's coming. Amen. And we're going to give God thanks and praise this morning as the choir renders a song. presence another time and we want to lift up his holy name. Um, the, our choir is looking so beautiful and we will be singing beautifully for you also. Amen. Amen. Thank you Lord. We're singing let your living waters flow. All right.
to a very important time of the service this morning. Are we all ready to hear from the Lord? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So God has specially ordained a very special woman for us this morning to speak to us. He has sent her with a very special word. So this morning we have Sister Murray. Amen. From Northampton who is in our midst. Sister, thank you so much for agreeing to come and speak to us this morning. Hallelujah. And so I just want to introduce Sister Murray to you. Murray Aransevia was born in the parish of Clarendon in Jamaica and migrated to... <laughs> All right. So Clarendon, here you come. Clarendon in Jamaica and migrated to England in 1990. She attends New Testament Church of God in Northampton, where she has functioned in various capacities, including church and pastors, council member, worship leader, Sunday school superintendent, Sunday school teacher, and hospitality team leader. Currently, she is one of the teachers of the new converts class to enhance and support the vision and programs of her church. She is a graduate of Overstone College and European Theological Seminary. She is a mother and grandmother and is passionate in serving God and applies biblical principles to all she does. I think one thing uh, sister did not uh, tell here is about her passion for missions. That is what we all know, isn't it? So she is very passionate about missions and she is... Uh, uh, companion of uh, our bishop and his team in many of his mission trips. So, sister, we are so glad that you are here this morning and we welcome you and uh, we pray that you will be used for the glory of God this morning. So, please come. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Thank you. Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon, church. It is so wonderful to be here, and thank you so much for that applause. It was so nice to feel welcome. You know, I've been here many, many times, but it's never easy to stand here. But one of the things that I always say, you know, to God be the glory, great things he has done. I love God. I love the things about God. I'm passionate for God, and I'm always available to do what God wants me to do. But um, this was... A joke in the sense that I was on my way to London to visit my uncle and I had a call from your bishop, your pastor. Hi bishop, wherever you are. And he said, oh, I need a preacher for the Women's Day. So I'm like, okay, would you like me to find somebody senior or somebody young? He said, no, you. I'm like, oh, okay. I thought you were asking me to, to recommend somebody. I didn't realize you were actually asking me to speak. And I just said, okay, you know what? Yes, Lord, I will make myself available. And for that, I'm truly grateful. And I believe that God has given me a word. Um, I had a text from Sister Sarah straight on. <laughs> I'm like, these people don't even waste time. Once you say yes, they're on to you, you know. And she gave me the theme and the scripture that, you know, the theme is underpinned by. And I thought, what a wonderful scripture. But I think this is for the pastor. I'm like, my God, I'm to be telling the people or to be sharing about being led by the Holy Spirit. And I then said, Lord, I avail myself to you. And to you, I'm truly available. Before I get into the word, I also ask permission from your bishop. I have a book 
which I don't normally do, but my sister, my blood sister, Megai, she lives in Texas. Together we have put together something, and this book is mostly hers. I only add a few little bits to it. But um, I said to her, I promise you I will do my bit, and I will try and promote it for you. But this book, not because she's my sister, it's a very good read. And the reason why I said it's a very good read, it's a book where it's underpinned by scripture. So as you read, as she tells the story about God's goodness and how through faith she's overcome, the scriptures are there to undergird and to underpin. One of the things that our father taught us was the word. And so we live by the word. And so whatever we do is underpinned by the word. I've only brought 15 copies. I had 16, but one is already gone. So I brought 15 copies, and I'm sure you're not going to let me go back with any. They're only 19.99. It's a very good book, a very thick book. And I promise you, you read this book, you will always be going back. People who have purchased it said, I can't put it down until it's finished. I want to know what happened next. I want to know what happened next. So please, try and get a copy before you go. That's a good that's the best I can do, sister, if you're watching. Thank you. God bless you. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me all my days. I've been held in your hand from the moment that I wake up until I lay entrusted me with your words. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will lead, that you will direct, that you will give me freedom to speak as an oracle of thine. Allow me, Lord Jesus, not to be weary. Help me never to be apprehensive, but just to deliver what you have given me and then sit down. Lord, I thank you for your word. I believe it's a word from you. And I pray for a new revelation as I Declare your words today to your people in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. The scripture that was read, and I thought they were going to read a few more verses, but that's okay. I'm only dealing with the two verses that you've actually read. And it's from Romans chapter 8 and verses 12 to 14. David C. Cooper said in his book that he wrote with our Raymond Culpepper, he said, the quality of one's life is largely determined by the ability to make wise, godly decision. This is the single most important key to a life of happiness and success. We can agree 
or we can disagree with this statement. However, the power of one's decision can be astounding. <laughs> For example, one decision can plunge humanity into sin. And if we look back in the garden, that's what happened with Adam and Eve. Or one decision can choose <laughs> oh God. Ah, to redeem the world. Jesus chose that decision. St. Luke chapter 22 and verse 42 told us that. He said, not my will, Lord, but thine be done. And he died on the cross for our sin. Those were two decisions. I know the theme for today is led by the spirit. But I am one of those persons who knows that there are many spirits. And so I don't want to be just led by the spirit. I want to be led by the spirit of God. So I'm sorry, sis, I've added the spirit of God to it. Because you see, there's spirits around. And so we just don't want to be led by any spirit. Well, I don't want to be. So today, the theme for me is going to be led by the spirit of God. And I want you to remember that we are led by the spirit of God. However, there is one decision that we all must make. And this decision will determine one's eternal existence. And that decision is to be led by the Spirit of God. And the reason why I said that, we have to make a choice. In order to be led, you have to decide you want to be led. We don't just automatically get led by the Spirit of God. It's a choice we have to make. Because the Spirit is a person. But he's not a person that's going to push himself on you. So you have to make yourself pliable or obedient and wanting to follow the leading. Amen, amen, amen. You see, our life is not predetermined. We are free to choose how we want to live. Because we are given this choice, that is why the Holy Spirit is very important to believers to help them guide our important life's decision. And I'm going to talk to believers for a little bit, but don't be fooled. I have a word also for the unsaved or the unbeliever. And men, I know it's Ladies' Day, but I'm also trying to make sure that I speak to everybody. So don't, be th don't think that I'm going to try and exclude you. Everything that we do is inclusive of whether you're male, whether you're female, whether you're an adult, or whether you're a child. If you want to be led by the Spirit of God, you have to make that choice. So let us look in particular at the context of Romans 8 and verse 14. And see what Paul meant when he says we are to be led by the Spirit of God. You see, in this passage, Paul tells the believer, we are in Christ. We have the promise of the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Because those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. Psalm 23 and verse 3 said, he guides me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Psalm 25 Psalm 32 and verse 8 says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you and watch over you. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 21 says, Whether you turn to the right or turn to the left, you will hear my voice behind you saying, This is the way to go. Walk in it. But all of this is based on the choice you make. Because if you don't want to be led, none of these matters. Walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to another so that you do the things that you wish. And that's Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16 to 17. So I'm going to be flicking through both scriptures, Romans and Galatians. So we say then, having the Holy Spirit is a prerequisite of being properly led by the Spirit. This point is made in Romans 8, verses 14 to 15. And let me read it again, just in case you missed it. It says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. 
For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father, or Daddy. You see, the whole context of this verse is about those who are in the flesh and those who are in the spirit. We have seen in scripture that this indwelling begins when we in faith and with a repented heart are baptized in Christ. So at this point, the spirit comes into us, it sanctifies us, and then it gives us new life. It strengthens us and seals us. Then our bodies become the temple of the Lord. So you see, there's a choice. In order to be led by the spirit of God, we first have to repent. Because the spirit doesn't deal in uncleanness. So we have to receive, we have to believe that we are sinners, that we need to be saved. We have to confess our sins, make a commitment. Then when we accept Christ as our savior, then the spirit comes in. There is another side of the spirit where you ask for the infilling. But in order to be led by the spirit of God, you have to know God. My friend... I would use her as an example, just came to me. She's staying with me. She's from Barbados. So she's from the sunny climes, and she keeps saying she's cold, she's cold. And I'm like, it's so lovely. Lord, the weather is so nice. But in order for her to be here with me today, we had to have a connection. Because she's coming because she knows me. She's accompanying me because she knows me. So in the tent, I've led her to Haro because she didn't know where she was going. But she had to make that decision. She could have said, it's okay, I'll stay home. That's okay too. But she chose. She made the choice. So she's here. It's the same with the spirit. The spirit doesn't force itself on us. And I'm not sure why the Lord is impressing that on me, but that was one of the main things. He is not impressing himself on us. And the spirit does not get impressed by us either. There are reasons why we need to be led by the Spirit and why it is so important. Because one of the things being led by the Spirit, it defines you. If you're led by the Spirit, then everybody knows you belong to somebody. So it defines you. That is why Christians are meant to be Christ-like. Because if we're Christians, we're going to act differently. We're going to behave differently. So people will know that we are Christians because we are Christ-like. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So when Romans chapter 8 and verse 14 said, the spirit does not just define you, it also defies you. So what, it's, what it means is, it tells you who you are. So it tells you who you belong to. We are not just led by the spirit, but we belong to Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. And so to be led by the spirit, we need to do a few things. We need to make sure that our walk, you know, when Sister Annette went into my sermon a little bit and I was smiling because I'm like, oh, thank you, Jesus. You know, this is really, really right because I'm on, she's on the right, I'm on the right track. The spirit, the Holy Spirit comes into an agreement with one spirit, allowing us to know that we belong to Jesus. And when we belong to Jesus, oh, how sweet the name of Jesus it sounds like music to my ear. Oh, that name, that name Jesus. You see, when we belong to Jesus, because there's a song that said, oh, there is power in the name of Jesus. When we belong to somebody, when we call that name, it matters. Every person in here belongs to somebody. And you know that because of your name. So I know that I'm Aaron Sivia because of my father. My father's name is Aaron Sivia. Nobody can tell me any different. I know where I belong. When you belong to somebody, you take on ownership. You have their name. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. That's why we can be confident in our relationship with God and our eternal home in heaven because of the Holy Spirit within us. But if we don't have that relationship with God, then we recognize that there is already a gulf between us. And these are not necessarily the sermons that people like to hear these days because they like to be told that it's going to be wonderful and God is going to bless you and he does that. But also we need to recognize that if we don't know God, we're going to hell. There is no prettiness about it. You are going to hell. 
And until you know God, until you make a commitment, hell is going to be your portion. So in order for you to be led by God, first of God, you're going to know God. Yeah. So if you're here today, you don't know God, I'm going to try to tell you today, please, from this moment, start seeking, start asking. Say, God, I want to know you. And hopefully before the sermon finish, you will come to a realization that you really need God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. To be led by the Holy Spirit is an inside thing. He leads from the inside out. You know, there was a song that says something on the inside is working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. But that's only for Christians, unfortunately. Because if you don't have Jesus on the inside, I mean, you can have the devil on the inside and it does manifest on the outside. We saw that in the news this week. There was a man in Australia who killed nine people, was stabbing people. He had the devil on the inside, be it mental, be it whatever. He was, he was messed up. And because of that, he acted out on the outside. So whatever is on the inside is going to manifest itself on the outside. So if we don't have God on the inside, there is no leading by the Holy Spirit, unfortunately. Pilate. When Jesus, when he came face to face with God, Pilate realized he needed to make a decision. And that is why I start with the word decision and choices. Pilate said to them, Pilate was trying to not make the decision, but he had to make the decision. He said, what shall I do with this man? Who is Pilate asking? He is in charge. What shall I do with this man, which is called Christ? Pilate thought he got away. So he said he's throwing the question out. You know, sometimes we do that. When our conscience is pricked. And when we get troubled, we try to say, anybody? Uh, 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 no. Pilate made the decision. This is a decision that you have to make. If you want to be led by the Holy Spirit, then you have to make that decision. Nobody can make it for you. Your pastor can't make that decision for you. As much as I know he loves you from the bottom of his heart. And he always talks about his wonderful church. And I agree that you're a wonderful church. I've been here many times. So I know you're a wonderful church. But as much as he loves you, he cannot lead you by the Holy Spirit. He can only give you direction. But you have to have that relationship with God. You see, the ability to choose and to make decision is what makes mankind uniquely human. It's what separates man from everything else that God has created. You know why? Mankind is made in the image of God. And part of that image of God is the ability, the freedom, the responsibility to, to make a choice. The birds don't make a choice, but God provides for them. The animals don't make a choice, but God supply their need. But human, we have a choice. So that's why Paul tells believer who are in Christ, we have the promise of the leadership of the Holy Spirit. So if we have this choice, we decide... When we get married, we decide when we have children. It's a choice. We decide if we want to eat. We decide if we don't want to eat. We decide if we want to sleep. We decide if we want to wake up. I mean, wow, what choices? We make them every day. But those choices are good choices because we need to live. But there is an eternal choice, which is even greater. And that's the choice of knowing Christ as our Lord and personal Savior so that we can be led by the Holy Spirit. So we all rampant and we all say this as Christians. Oh, I'm led by the Holy Spirit. I want to be led by the Holy Spirit. That's all well and good. But we have to make sure that we have a relationship with God. You see, the book of Acts is filled with examples of how the Holy Spirit are directing and leading people. Because to be led by the Spirit is a faith walk. And that is when Sister Annette went into my business a little bit. And then she started talking about the blind men. 
And for me, I'm glad you talk about the ear, but I talk about the faith. You know why the Spirit of God, to be led by the Spirit, is a faith walk? We think of the two blind men, the blind beggars in St. Matthew chapter 9 and verse 27 to 31. These two blind men, or blind beggars as the scripture called them, heard that Jesus was passing by. And so, the two blind beggars were so happy that Jesus were passing by. You know why? Because they heard about all the things that Jesus was doing. So they get excited. They thought, my God, today is our day. In the world, they said, I've got the jackpot. Jesus is passing by. We are blind and we are begging. And if we call out to him, I'm sure he's going to answer us. But oh, they were so disappointed. That as they heard Jesus pass by, because I'm sure they would have heard the commotion. They would have heard the crowd following Jesus. And they shout out, thou son of David, have mercy. And Jesus just walked by. My God. I want you to picture that. You are shouting for help. And nobody just passed you by. They're thinking, no. Jesus, we are here. Jesus. My God. They were screaming at the top of their voices. Jesus just ignored them and kept walking. He just ignored them and kept walking. The scripture said they walk for miles and they were shouting. You know what they said? Desperate time call for desperate measure. These men decide today is the day I'm going to get my sight. That's how you need to be, no, to be desperate about being led by the Holy Spirit. When you really want Jesus, you need to cry out to him. And even if you think he's not answering, you will still cry out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. Hallelujah. Jesus could not have missed them. He could not. Because the scripture said they shout the more. They scream on top of their voices. And they were following him. Even though they were blind. They always said another sense is heightened. Or somebody was leading them. But they decided I am not giving up today. That's a faith walk. And that's what I love about these blind beggars. You know they walked. Until they went to the house where Jesus was going to be. And then Jesus went up to them. You called me. Do you really believe I can heal you? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. He didn't even touch them. He just said, your faith. Because of your faith. Because of your faith. Be made hold. Has anybody got faith in you this morning? That you need to be touched. You need to be led by the Lord this morning. But you just want to cry out a little more. You just need to pursue a little bit more. You need to push a little bit more. And your needs will be met. We have many schools of thought saying, well, Jesus didn't want to disclose who he was. Or Jesus, I don't care about any of that. All I understood and I see was a faith walk. Amen. That's good enough for me. I'm not sure if Jesus didn't want to um, say who he was. If he didn't want the people to know who he was. It doesn't matter. But the man showed the sign of faith. It took faith for you to be calling somebody and they ignore you. Have you ever thought of saying hello to people? They say, hi! And they don't, and you die. <laughs> because you don't want anybody to know that you actually was trying to say hello. And it's like, they, ignored, they ignored it. Yeah, they didn't know you. They ignored you. Do you really know them? Yes, you do. Maybe they didn't see you. You know how that feels? Yeah. So think about, just for one moment, just think about the blind men. They can't see, so that didn't matter. And I thought, you know what, well, sometimes that's good when you can't see things, you know. All they knew, they wanted to be healed. So they couldn't see. So they couldn't care less. Who was saying, shut up. They're thinking, I have a need. You see, and that's the thing. If you believe that Jesus, Jesus is the answer, then you don't worry about what your friend thinks. We are too concerned about what people think about us. Friends cannot get you into heaven. But friends will get you into hell every time. You don't have to agree with me. But I know that for a fact. Because friends can't save my soul. And sometimes we have to get rid of some of the friends that we have. Because they're stumbling our walk with God. Because they're too strong. They're distraction. You know, some people are so heavily influenced. But only the Spirit of God can break that influence. 
That is why it's important to be led by the Spirit of God. That's why it's important to have the Spirit of God. Because in order to be led, he said, the Spirit draws me. So if you don't have the Spirit, there's no other Spirit to draw you to Christ. So we need to be led by the Spirit. It means that we have to have a relationship with God. Because when you have a relationship with God, then you believe in the God that you serve. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Walk in the Spirit and you will not fulfill the loss of the flesh. And everybody almost assumes that the loss of the flesh is always about fornication. No, it's not. That too, but it's not always that. It's about the little lie that you call white. The lie is not white. The lie is just lie. And there's no big lie and there's no little lie and there's no in-between lie. Lie is just lie. If it didn't go so, it was just a lie. We cannot be led by the Spirit when we're telling lies. So we need to fix ourselves up. I'm saying, God, I don't think you want me to talk to the people like this because this is for the pastor to fix up his church and to tell them nicely and whatever. You're giving me this assignment, but hey, I'm just going to deliver it and sit down. Please do not shoot me. Because he leads from the inside out. And if we don't have the spirit, because you see, what the spirit does, not the necessarily the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but just the spirit of God, which draws you to make a commitment, it allows you to have a conscience. Just the spirit that draws you to make the confession, to say, Lord, forgive me, I'm a sinner, I want to be saved. From that day forward, something inside you change. You don't believe me? Well, from that day that I made that confession, something inside me changed. I'll tell you why. You know, many people like Marie, and I don't say this a lot. They're like, oh, Marie, you're always smiling. I had an anger issue. You did not want to meet me when I didn't know God. You say boo, and you're down on the floor before you know it. I had such an anger. I'm not sure where I got it from. Well, the devil. I was crazy. God changed me to a point where people see me just smiling and I'm calling everybody precious. And they think, oh, you're so God help you. If you knew the Marie that I knew when I was, before I knew Christ, I do not even want to know that Marie again. That is why I tell the devil when he saved me, I said, if I go to hell, I am going to kill the devil. It's not for, you laugh, you laugh. I, I'm serious because I know who I was. And if I, I'll be the first person that they will write about that somebody went to hell and the devil dead because I'm going to kill him. I had such an anger that I'm just thinking, God, I don't know. But when I met Christ and when I was broken at that altar, he filled me immediately. And I said, my God, I did some rolling and some kicking and some screaming that day. But God had to fix me up good and proper. And then I made a pledge to him. I say, God, if you serve me, serve me good. I didn't even know what I was praying. I was just talking. That's how I talked to him. But it got to the point where now I can truly say, I am a friend of God. Because I learned to talk to God like I talk to you. I don't know how to pray the pretty prayer. I just talk to God. I tell him everything. And thank you, Jesus. He always come true for me. When people see me, when I go back to Jamaica, to Clarendon, that everybody knows. They're like, Marie, is that you? Yes, it's me. Thanks be to God who has given me the victory over this anger. And one of the worst things you see about the devil, because the devil wanted to kill me, you know. The devil knew that I had a profile because, unfortunately, I didn't always look like this. I was one of those who used to run for Jamaica. So I had the privilege, can you understand, of traveling up and down the world with that anger, Master G, prison wouldn't miss me. So God had to fix me quick because God saw beyond my fault. He looked beyond my fault and saw my need. He said, that is my child. That's who I want. So don't be 
fooled. Don't be fooled about the, the way the prettiness and people influence. I tell you that. Today, I can count on my hands who I truly call friend. And one of those persons is your pastor. I don't have friends. Because I know what I used to be. And I do not want any little scraps or just from my past to just rise up again. That's a decision I have made. I get on with everybody, but I, de I decide who comes into my private space. Because I want to be led by the Holy Spirit. And it's easy to slip back into your old ways. Don't be fool. You can't outdo the devil. The devil has all the cunning tricks. He has all the tricks. So don't think that you are so special and you are so wonderful that he's going to pass you by. He looks for your weakness because he knows. And that's why we need the Holy Spirit. We need to be led by the Holy Spirit. Because the decisions that we make will affect our life and our lives forever and ever and ever. So when the Spirit guides those decisions, oh, how beautiful that decision is. And the decision and the, the decision that we make will see the result very rewarding. But it's okay if we had made a mistake. That's the beauty about being led by the Holy Spirit. That is why Christ went to the cross. We just celebrated Easter where he died for our sins so that you and I have the access. So it doesn't matter if we had fallen off, if we had gone astray, we can always come back. Walk in the spirit. And it's not walking and hallelujah, hallelujah. That's not that spirit they're talking about. You know, some people think when it's walking the spirit, you have to go everywhere and shama, shama, shama. No. That's not, that's not the spirit that they're talking about. It's about the lifestyle. You don't have to be so, oh, hallelujah. I'm a, no, 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 no. You can go alongside somebody and pray with them and nobody knows. That's been led by the spirit actually because that's wisdom. <laughs> Believers must walk with God in fellowship. And in the word, with the Holy Spirit, who is in us, is our inner compass. You see, if we're going to be led by the Spirit, we've got to know the word of God. We've got to live the word of God. We've got to walk the word of God. You know why? Because if we don't know the word, I was talking to my, my friend, when trouble comes, the song, you know, some writer really penned it right. They said, when the music fade." And all is stripped away. Oh, if I don't know the word, that's when the anger issue comes up. But thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. It's the word of God. So we need to understand the importance of Bible studies. We need to understand the importance of personal devotion. And I'm not saying Bible studies as if you have to come to Every Bible study is at Harahav. Sorry, Pastor. I'm not saying that. But you need to have a personal relationship with your Bible. Amen. Be it on the phone, be it on the iPad, or be in the actual book. Find time every day to read. Because as you read the Word, you get to know God. Because the Word is God. He said in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. So God and the Word is all tied up together. So the more you read the word is the more you become like God and the more you know about God. You see the word and God is your friend. If you know the word you become a friend of God. Because you start learning about your God through the word. Galatians 5 and verse 18 talks about being led by the spirit because you're no longer under the law. And it talks about that there's only two ways you can attempt to live the Christian life. Either in your own strength or by the Holy Spirit's strength. And it's amazing. Paul is talking to Christians. And I thought, this is strange. He's talking to Christians. Being led by the Spirit. Which means that we can be saved. And we're not led by the Spirit of God. It sounds strange. You can be saved. But you're not led by the Spirit of God. That is why this scripture has been written. To remind us. That there is things that we need to do. I'm looking.
looking at the time, so I'm going to jump to a couple of things. And I want us to turn to Galatians 5, verses 22 to 23. And verse 22 reads, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Brother Dion, could you please put up my little picture, please? Or pictures. Hopefully you can see them. In Jamaica, in Clarendon, we used to call that panganat. But it's pomegranate. I love that fruit. There is another two fruits that I'd like to share, or another one, if you're able to show that. Yes, everybody knows this one. The orange or the tangerine or the nectarine. That's a fruit. Could you keep them on the screen for me a bit, please? And I want you to picture those fruits. But the fruit, I never say fruits, F-R-U-I-T, without the S. The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Nine. Did I count that right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. One fruit, nine segments. And you know why I like the panganut or the pomegranate? Sorry. I know you'll laugh at that one, yes. The pomegranate, if you look inside, it's one. Are you able to show the actual pomegranate as an old fruit, please? The other one, the word, okay, that's fine. I wanted to show you that they just cut it. It's one fruit. But in that fruit, you see how many little particles? But what I did like about that fruit is the cluster. There's all together in one segment. That's what the spirit is saying. That's kind of the fruit we should have in the spirit. Think of the pomegranate or the pomegranate, whichever you, however you choose to pronounce it. Forget about the orange and the nice slither of one and another slither of another. The pomegranate has a cluster. One fruit with nine different segments in the one fruit. The fruit of love. So if we are led by Christ, all these fruits need to be evident in our lives. And they need to be physical. That's the beauty of being led by the Holy Spirit. Because the fruit of the Spirit is in our lives. And so anybody and everybody should be able to identify them in us. Every single one of them. That's what I like. You know, people say, Sister Marie, well, I'm not, I'm not so patient, you know, but I have love. Wrong again. Uh -uh. Big mistake. If you don't have patience, we need to pray for it. You need to seek it. Because as Christians, we need to have all these in one fruit. He didn't say the fruits. The fruit, one fruit, possesses nine different things. The fruit of love. You see, love is translated from the Greek word agape, which has multiple words. It talks about including the eros love, the sexual love, the filial love, the brotherly love. But we're going to talk about the agape love, the perfect love. That's the love that God gives. And that's the love we can give. You see, if we have the, if we have been led by the spirit, the agape love will be evident because the agape means that we will love everybody. We won't just love our friends and our neighbors. We love everybody. It doesn't matter how they are. We will still love them. You see, the fruit that God wants us to bear is the fruit of love. The only way we can produce God's love is to receive his love. This is why Jesus says, remain in my love. Only those who live in their lives inside the love of God will be able to bear the fruit of love. Mm -hmm. 
And I'm going to rush on because I can see it's after one. We've got the fruit of joy. Which these ones seem quite easy. Most people say, I love you. I've got lots of friends. I'm happy. I'm joyful. You see, joy is translated as delight. It is often seen in the Bible with gladness. You see, joy and gladness walk hand in hand. Because if you're joyful, you're happy, you're laughing, you're smiling, you're giving it all that. And joy and gladness is also dependent on your circumstances. But we are encouraged by scripture in James chapter 1, verses 1 to 2, that we should consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing is of your faith produces perseverance. But we are only happy and joyful when things are going good. So we need to change our mindset. We need to learn to start thanking God even when there's pain so that the fruit of joy will be evident so everybody can look at you and say, my God, Sister Mary, you're always happy. That's what people tell me, but they don't know. It's a daily prayer and process. I beg God, please, Lord, help me never to let the ugly head of the devil get in me, please. So it's a daily, I have to live daily on my face before God because I know Marie. You know you. You maybe wasn't as aggressive like me. But maybe you weren't as honest as me. You see, my problem wasn't honesty, but my problem was aggression. Yeah. And some pro people have problem with honesty. So you tell a little lie, and then you say, well, no, I was only joking, man. No, no, it's not a joke. When you get caught out, you say, I was only joking, man. No, it's a lie. But you see, the thing is, when you practice those, they, become, they start growing to big fruit. Yeah. And if you're not careful, even that cluster, the lie is the bigger one. It takes over and before you know it, that just died, it just dropped out. And so your fruit becomes uneven or lopsided because one of the spirit, fruits of the spirit is missing. The fruit of forbearance. It means long and passion. Through the Holy Spirit, we are able to wait longer before indulging our passions. We become long-tempered rather than short-tempered. That's the fruit of forbearance. Nobody wants to wait. So we get impatient. And once we get impatient, then we have to be careful. The fruit of the Spirit is not so evident. But if we learn just to be to temperance, just to wait a little bit, forbearance, it's amazing. This is important for Christians. And I'm like, Lord, this is important for Christians. Can you manage it poor unsafe? If we are Christians and we have to make sure we get all of this right, the person who does not know God, my word. So you see, we have a lot to do. We have a lot of work to do as Christians. We need the fruits of the Spirit to be evident. So always think of the pomegranate. Even if you've never eaten it, buy one from Tesco's or wherever you shop. Cut it so you look at it and say, oh, this is what Sister Mary is talking about. They cluster together. That means they're part of it. That's what we need to do. The fruit of kindness. And this one is easy. Everybody likes to be kind. Everybody's happy to give somebody something. And I know you're going to show me kindness today by buying those books. <laughs> That's kindness. That's kindness. So you're going to show me kindness. But it's not about a one-off kindness. Somebody said you should be naturally kind. It's not always easy to be kind to the people who hurt you. Don't be fooled. That's why it takes the spirit of God to help you. I'm not telling you any fairy tale. I know you know this, but the Lord wants to remind you. And ladies, it's ladies day. And you know why? Because we have something called emotions. We're very emotional. More so than the men. And so we tend to hold on to things a little bit longer. But God is saying, just let go. We do. Men, some, men's do some men do hold on to things. Don't be fooled. You don't get away with it. They remind you. You, know, you did that to me. And so, um, mm. okay. But the fruit of kindness should be evident in our lives. We shouldn't have to think twice to be kind to somebody. We walk past people in the street all the time. 
and we just think, oh, help them, you know, because some of them will take the money and we find excuses why we can't help them. But there's always another way. You don't have to give them money. You could buy them a drink. You could get them a coffee. You get them a sandwich. You don't have to give them money. I mean, we had one in Northampton. I think he's moved on. But he was very particular about what he takes, even though he's a beggar. And um, my friend and I, I won't call her name because she's not around, and I didn't ask her if I could share this. But we saw him, and I thought, oh, he must be hungry. So I went to McDonald's, and I bought him a McDonald's, and she decided to buy him peanuts. <laughs> he looked at us, he took the McDonald's, and he said, me no want that. I said, maybe he's got an allergy to nuts. You don't have the money. We said, no, but we have food. You don't have to have the nuts, but you can have food. Because I'm not too particular about always want to give them money, because I'm not sure what they're going to do, but at least I know we had something to eat. Yeah. But even with that, I mean, we laugh about it every day, and I said, you see, that's your problem. You're giving them nuts, and they have allergy. Give them food, proper food. She said, well, it's what I have at the time. I said, I understand, precious. I'm just messing with you. But even in that, just be kind. Just try to show kindness because it should be something that, as Christians, because sometimes, because we are not so kind, our unsafe friends do not want to share the same space with us. They said, I don't want to go to that church because them people up there is not nice. It's not really the people up there. It's you them talking about. Because it's who they know. But we represent the church. You see, that's the thing. You see the knock-on effect? Yeah. One of you represents all of us. Yeah. So they said they're not going up there. Not because of everybody here. Some of the people here don't even know them. But they know you. And you represent this church. So you stumble people from coming in. But if you had, or if you were walking, and allowed the spirit to lead you, maybe the response they got would have been different. So you'd have had a different person, somebody else would be coming. So what God is saying, I'm not, I don't want to tell you off. I'm not here to tell you off. I'm just here to say, just encourage us. Let us all, including myself, daily, we need to seek to live in the fruit of the Spirit so that we can walk and be led by God. The fruit of faithfulness. The New Testament faith is the belief in God and the conviction that Jesus is the Messiah through whom we obtain eternal salvation. With this in mind then, we constantly pray for you that our God may make you worthy of your calling and that his power he may bring to fruition for every desire for goodness and every deed prompted by faith. That's 2 Thessalonians 1 and verse 11. The fruit of faithfulness. The fruit of gentleness. Meekness does not identify the weak. So not because you're gentle, you're not weak. Never let anybody tell you that you're weak and you're a pushover. No. You are a gentle person. And that's okay. We're supposed to experience and exercise and show the fruit of gentleness. Because you're more stronger when you are gentle. Jesus described himself as gentle in Matthew chapter 11 and verse 29. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Isn't that such a calming and soothing word? You'll find rest for your soul. The fruit of self-control. Galatians 5 and verse 16. Walk in the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Self-control relates to both chastity, sobriety, particularly modern in eating and drinking. Self-control is about everything. The way we behave, the way we carry ourselves, the way we do. Self-control. When we stand in the line, self-control. I was here first. <laughs> Just a little bit of self-control. These fruit of the Spirit are what God wants to cultivate in our lives. 
when we are being led by the Spirit, we will produce these fruit in our lives, including love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control. All of these will be evident. So when a person look on, they will say, there goes a child of God. Yeah. Because you're whole, you're total. Yeah. I'm going to wrap this up because of time. And I want to say today, if there's anybody here who have not made a commitment to follow God, in order for you to be led by the Spirit, that's something that you have a need to do. Without making a commitment, without confessing your sins, without asking God to forgive you, it's not going to be possible to be led by the Spirit of God. And if you're a Christian, which most of us here are, and you feel that during my presentation or my little talk to you, there are some of the fruits of the Spirit that weren't so evident in your life. Because you know what you have. You don't need anybody to tell you. People might tell you too, but you know. Then that's the time for us to start praying and just asking God to help us. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart, I pray. Try me. See if there be any wicked ways in me. Cleanse me from every sin and set me free. You see, being led by the Holy Spirit is a journey. It's a journey of faith. It's a journey of obedience. And it's a journey of trust. It's a journey of faith because you believe that if you are led by the Spirit then whatever you ask God to do, he will do it. It's a journey of trust that you know because of the God of who he is. He will come through for me. And it's a journey of obedience that if I want to walk this faith, this Christian walk, If I want to walk this Christian walk in obedience to God's word, then I need to be led by the Holy Spirit. So today, I'm going to ask if there's any person here who do not know God as their personal savior or friend. I'm going to ask you just to put your hand up and we'll pray for you. And if you want to contemplate it and you make the decision another time, that's also fine. But you don't know what tomorrow may bring. Sister Sandra said it. We might never see each other again. We don't know. My sister shared, in, even in the book, a testimony about two men that she saw one day when she was going to work. And she went into the shop and they said, oh, nice lady. And she said, oh, leave me alone. She said, nice lady. And they said, she stopped and she said, yes. She said, oh, give us some money and whatever. She said, I don't have money. Why are you out here? And she said she could see that they were like intoxicated. They were kind of drunk. And she said to them, you know, young men, the Bible said, young man, I call upon you because you are strong. You guys are out here when you should really be seeking God. She said, I know that your parents would have prayed for you. You look like somebody that your grandmother or somebody were praying for you. And the guys start to cry. And she said, do you mind me praying with you? She said they were really intoxicated. So she's not sure if what the prayer was going to really reach. But she prayed with them. And she left. And on her way from work the next day, she saw the lady frantically who owned the shop was in the road waving, waving to her. And so she stopped and she pulled over and she said, Miss, I had to, I'll keep looking out for you. Last night, both of them went to sleep. One did not wake up. But she was able to pray with them. That's, that's life. That's the reality of life. I said, sis, you were led by the Holy Spirit. It was the Spirit that led you to the shop. She said, I don't even know why I went to the shop. It's not even somewhere I go. 
But the spirit knew that those two men's souls were precious. So even though they were intoxicated, the God that we serve would have been able to reach their heart through the prior. That's the God we serve. And that's why it's important to be led by the Holy Spirit. Because we don't know what our end is going to be. But we want to make sure that when our end comes, we hear yes. Enter into everlasting life. I'm going to ask you to stand with me at this time. Please. And I'm going to ask anyone who wants to be prayed for. The team here, I'm sure you've got a team here who would pray for you. You have your struggles. You have things you want to, you know, to be stronger. You want to be more persistent for God. Then come. It's not going to be a deliberate or a long or a drawn out thing. It's just about saying, yes, Lord, here I am. Help me. I want to give my heart to the Lord. Then you come. Come for salvation. Well done, young man. Thank you, Jesus. If it was only you I spoke to today, I am so happy. Because God loves you. Thank you, Jesus. God loves you. And I know you want to be led by God. And God has great things for you. I believe that with all my heart. He said he will not allow his word to return to him void. But it will accomplish much. And I'm so grateful for this young man. It is not easy to make this step, but you have done it. Did you come for salvation? Amen. This is a young man who came to give his heart to the Lord. Let us celebrate and give God thanks. Bless you. There's another little one. Come. Thank you, Jesus. You're never too young. Never too young. When God called Samuel, he didn't even understand the call of God on his life. He keep going to Eli. You call me. He said, speak, Lord, thy servant hear it. <laughs> You're never too young because you know right from wrong. So we give God thanks for your lives. And we celebrate God for you. I'm just going to pray for these two young people who God has brought to the altar. Father, we want to thank you for these souls. We thank you because you are still God. And we thank you that there is nothing that is difficult for you. And you said all we have to do is to confess with our mouth that you are the Christ, that you died and that you will rise again, that you will forgive us of our sins and you will receive us. So I thank you that as they are working with these workers at the altar, that they will make that confession to ask you to come into their lives. And from this day forward, they will never be the same again. They will be a beacon and a light to their peers. That they will see the fruits of the Spirit so evident in their lives that they wanted their God. They want to be like them. So Lord, I thank you for today. I thank you for your word. I thank you. And I thank you for touching the hearts of your people. I bless you and I honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to us this afternoon. Hallelujah. We give God thanks for the two souls that are saved this afternoon. Hallelujah. What a wonderful joy it is to know that our children are walking in the ways of God. Amen. And as we always do, we're going to pray for our dear sister this morning. I want you all to stand and stretch your hands towards her. She has poured out what God has laid upon her heart. Father, we give you thanks for your daughter this morning, Lord. I pray that, Lord, that you will fill her, Lord. Fill her, O oh Father God. 
and i pray that lord your anointing will flow through her oh father god i pray that she will be a blessing to many people lord jesus hallelujah i pray that you will extend the border of her ministry oh lord and i pray that you take her all over this world to preach your word lord to the nations so oh father where they have not heard you father i pray that you will use your daughter for your glory i bring her family all her loved ones i bring them to you i pray that you will bless her and be with her and keep her lord in jesus mighty name i pray amen 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 please be seated so uh for this weekend we want to do something special with our women so we organized a bible memory competition and uh, we gave them 50 verses to memorize and many people took that challenge and uh, many of them they got discouraged in between and many of them left but there were some who held on to that and they came and they had a test they wrote the test they wrote the verses and we have the winners to be declared this morning and it is so important to keep god's word in our heart it's something that i think somewhere down the line we have neglected we have forgotten to keep god's word in our heart so 50 verses that uh, our people memorize so here are the winners so we have the first prize Sister Shenane Watson are you here Sister Shenane she's not here this morning okay we have sister Kathleen Guadalupe sister Kathleen come on come on i request sister Anna to please come and do the honors Sister Kathleen Can we give her a big hand please Amen. So we have the third prize sister Tara Calder Pasley please come up sister Well done to you sister can we give her a big hand and we also have sister hermin anderson sister come up so we are going to give her a appreciation certificate you are never too old to memorize so here is our dear sister yeah I won't tell you how old she is because she doesn't like it but she's over 80 I can say that and she was so enthusiastic to do it she took up the challenge many of our young people you know they went back but she persevered god bless you sister god bless you thank you so much amen amen tandya Sister Annette can you please come and thank you so much for coming this afternoon and for encouraging us and we are truly blessed having you here and we look forward to you coming here and sharing the word maybe next year yeah god bless you thank you so much thank you sister mari sorry Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you. What a wonderful word from God and what an encouragement. God bless you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Amen. Thank you. Amen. So Yeah, I would like to thank everyone who worked towards this weekend, the worship team, Sister Sandra for leading us yesterday and today as our moderator, Sister um Lindell and sister Annie was there yesterday and uh, our kitchen team brother Tom and Christine and brother John 
for all the hard work. Just want to give you uh, thanks. And I want to thank all our volunteers who worked, Dane and uh, Sister Dorosia, and there is uh, Hepsi who worked yesterday, and uh, Sister Lorene for all your help towards the ministry. Sister Cox for being my companion on all the shopping trips we had to do. And uh, for everybody else in whatever way you have contributed. Brother Dion for the uh, music system and everything else yesterday. And uh, above all, I want to also thank my family, my husband. Yeah. And uh, without him, I can't do anything. He's my supporter. Okay, He's the one who always encourages me. So thank you for always standing with me. And uh, uh, I also thank Hepsi and Joshua. So Hepsi, Joshua, and also my husband, they did all the arrangement for the tables, moved the chairs, and did all that hard part yesterday. Thank you so much, my family. And thank you, everyone. God bless you. Give God thanks for each and every one of you. <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I've got a small token for Sister Sarah. This is from the Women's Ministry Board. Um, we want to say thank you. You are amazing. And we love you very much. You are working so hard. And I know that you are led by the Spirit. So thank you for all that you do. This is something very small, but we just wanted to say thank you. So this is from your team of ladies. Okay. God bless you. And thank you. So thank you, church. So I request you all to continue to support the women's ministry. You know all the programs that we have. Wednesday morning, we have the women's prayer. Every Thursday evening, 7 to 8, we have a Bible study. We do a verse-by-verse -verse Bible study. Uh, we are doing uh, the book of Genesis at the moment, and it's an exciting journey. So I request you all, if you have never come uh, on the Bible study, please do come and encourage, uh, be encouraged. Amen. I now request my husband to please come and close us in prayer and speak a word of uh, the benediction. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This is supposed to be a ladies' uh, Sunday, and, and I should not be concluding it, but, you know, it was a wonderful uh, uh, Sunday, and I thank the ladies, the board, for all that you have done through uh, the weekend. Thank you so much. Shall we all stand up and pray for Sister Flowers, who is unwell. We need to pray for Sister Elma as well. She was there yesterday, and it was so beautiful to see her yesterday that God will continue to work in her life and that she will be healed. And uh, shall we all stand up and uh, remember the dear ones and ask God to heal them. Heavenly Father, we praise and we thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for making it so memorable. And we pray that you will continue to bless the women's board, O oh Lord. Thank you for the ministry that they do. I pray that you will continue to be with them. You will bless them, Lord, and that your name will be glorified through the ministry that they do, O oh Father God Jesus. And I pray the ministry, Lord, the impact of the ministry will be felt in the church and beyond, O oh Father God Jesus. And I pray, O oh Father God, that they will be bring many more. They will be able to bring many more people into the salvation and disciple many more lady, ladies through their ministry, O oh Father God. O oh Lord, we come at Sister Marie who gave the word today, O oh Father. I pray that you will anoint her, O oh Father God. And she, even as she has poured out today afternoon, I pray that you will pour back, O oh Father God, so that she will receive the anointing and she will be equipped to do more ministry unto thee, O oh Father God Jesus. O oh Lord, we also commit Sister Flowers, O oh Father God, into your hands. Even as she has been unwell for some time, I pray that you will continue to be with her. Bless her and heal her, O oh Father God. We also commit Sister Elma, Lord. I pray that you will be with her, Lord, and you will heal her. Give her the comfort that is required, O oh Father God, even this in this time of stress, O oh Father God. O oh Lord, if there is anybody else who is unwell, O oh Father God, who is having problems with their health, I pray that you will be with them and bless them, O oh Father God. 
Finally, we remember our bishop, O oh Father God. We remember Sister Liz, O oh Father God. I pray that you will be with them and you will bless them, Lord God. I pray that you will be with them in their ministry as well, O oh Father God, and I, that you will continue to bless them. I commit all the near, dear ones here in the church, O oh Father God. I pray that you will bless each and every one of us. We will go back with the Spirit of God, even as we continue to walk in the Spirit, led by the Spirit of Father God, and exhibiting the fruit of the Holy Spirit in and through our lives, O Father God. We give you all glory, honor, power, and praise, because you alone deserve it. In Jesus' most precious name, we pray, O Father God. Amen, amen. Shall we all say the benediction together? Now may the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the full fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Comforter, rest, remain, and abide with us all, now and forevermore. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you all. God bless you. Amen.